Okay, uh, back again with Chapter 5 in your Jones and Bartlett Fire Officer Principles and Practice uh, textbook. Um, we're talking about Fire Department Administration. And again, um, I've probably said it before, I'll say it again. Um, this is just going to be you know, a brief uh, PowerPoint video uh, from the chapter. Right. Um, I don't teach to the test. I'm not teaching to everything in the chapter. And pretty much, uh, I think by now you realize what I've done is I just pick out um, bits and pieces in the chapter which I think are important um, to be taught for a new fire officer. And it's if I was going to do my own standalone program for fire officer, you know, a lot of this stuff is the stuff that I would pull out and you know give to you in the classroom. But uh, that said, if you're taking the course and you're looking to uh, get the state fire officer certificate, you need to pass the state test. So you need to read the book because, uh, like I said, I'm only skimming over a lot of the material. So going on with uh, fire department administration in this chapter uh, one of the things I think is something you might be interested in uh, that you could employ as a fire officer especially as you move up the ranks uh, job performance evaluations now you might think well job performance evaluations that's just for a career department well no not really um, when I was district chief a number of years ago I actually started job performance evaluations for the fire chiefs um, that were under my command and then I had um, them do job performance evaluations on their officers and I would review these and again this was a volunteer fire department um, I got jammed up one time where I really needed to get rid of a fire officer he was he was really that bad unfortunately I really had nothing in writing to fall back on so this is why I started the job performance evaluations just so I could you know have something in writing that I could say listen um, I've looked at this chief or I looked at this this captain or this lieutenant and over the past six months his, his performance is terrible and push come to shove even in the volunteer service if I got to get rid of him well here's <clears throat> here's some here's some issues right this is the, this is the issues he had or if somebody comes back to me and says hey you're uh, you know harassing this guy or whatever so well no he's he's a terrible fire officer and here's why so job performance evaluations they can be used in volunteer fire departments so what we like to talk about is the responsibilities of a supervisor Again, this is out of the book. They're just as important in a volunteer fire department as in a full-time career organization. So, as the fire officer, as the new fire officer, you can shape a firefighter's career, especially a new firefighter. Um, a new guy comes in. He often remember. They often remember their first boss. I mean, I can remember when I joined 45 years ago. Um, my first chief. I remember him to this day, um, and it, it did make a big impact on me <clears throat> as as a brand new firefighter, um, as this fire chief, as a mentor, and and other other older firefighters and fire officers that were my mentors when I first joined. So they they did make a big impact on me, and I remember them to this day. So you know keep that in the back of your mind if you're the uh, either a senior man or a fire officer new fire officer and you get a new guy comes in uh, first impressions are big and you know they're gonna be long-lasting too so try to make a good impression and try to be a good mentor uh, to these new kids coming in so going on with job performance evaluations the picture on the left it's a, uh, a reprint of an iconic painting by Bill Bresnan. Now, Bill Bresnan was a uh, 
firefighter in New York City. His grandfather was the inventor of the Bresnan distributor. So uh, anybody that doesn't know what a Bresnan distributor is, uh, that'll be a test question. Go out and find it. So anyway, um, I actually have this print hanging in my uh, my office. Right? It's called the the officer and the proby. So I don't know if you can see it here, but if you look close, you can see the uh, the deer in the headlights there of the proby through the mask, and his officer, his lieutenant, standing there with his arm on his his holding on to his arm, leading him, you know, showing him the ropes. Say, you know, come with me, kid. This is the way. You know, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do things. So, you know, try to emulate that role as the fire officer. Uh, when you guys coming in, you're there. You're going to be their trainer, their mentor. Um, they're going to be somebody. You're going to be somebody who they look up to. So you know, try not to disappoint them. Like I said, as the officer, you will be tasked with leading, you know, new members. So s keeping with job performance evaluations, we're going to talk about feedback after an incident because the job performance evaluation. It might be done on an annual basis, on a semi-annual basis, quarterly basis. But feedback after an incident, I think, is very important. Um, <clears throat> and these evaluations, well, these feedback feedback after an incident and job performance evaluations, um, they're not a special event, as the book says. Um, you need to provide feedback after challenging incidents. So what we like to say is do a tailboard critique all right so in the picture above it looks like um, maybe they just wrapped up a training session or they were just wrapping up a uh, if a call and possibly their officer their senior man grabbed everybody has them together and he's saying listen just going over what we did you know what went right um, were there some things that maybe we uh, we need to you know stiffen up on um, procedures or policies, um, give out some accolades, uh, just you know, maybe some training things that he wants to point out while we're there at a specific building, things like that. So that would be a, a tailboard critique right at the scene. Um, you can do this when you get back to the firehouse, maybe before everybody leaves. If you're in a volunteer house, everybody you know is getting ready to go out the door, gather everybody around, say, get, guys, um, just come to the back of the rig for a minute. Just want to go over a few things that uh, that happened today on this this last call, <clears throat> and try to be very positive, right? Uh, or you know, sometimes grab the guys before they take their gear off. And it should really should be a a positive type of feedback um, and a learning training environment, pointing out, hey, if stuff didn't go right, point it out. Try to get the members if they think they were. Um, if they did something incorrect, try to let them say, hey, listen, yeah, I, know I should have done this, I should have done that. You know, let that bring out. So it's basically used as a training uh, program and not really any type of uh, a disciplinary type thing. So think about that as after each incident, try to just give some a little, little bit of uh, feedback, encouragement, or whatever as far as how to do it. So then we need we talk about immediate corrective action so sometimes you, you, you can't wait stuff has to be done uh, right away and they say negative feedback so if we we're gonna do a, a tailboard critique and somebody really screwed up you know we might want to pull them off to the side in private all right so negative feedback should be done in private to an individual however you must correct unsafe actions immediately and I think that's really important. So that's even on the fire ground, on the training ground. If something is not being done correctly or safely, it has to be stopped. All right. And during training, you should stop the training evolution if a skill is being performed incorrectly. Right. I like to say if you don't correct it immediately, you are legitimizing that improper skill, and now you'll have to unlearn it. And I use the example a lot when I'm out at the uh, the training center. And I got companies going out, and they're going to do a, a VEIS or a, a search, and they're going to do it off a ground ladder into a second floor window. 
and more than once I've seen the ladder placement, the tip of the ladder get placed into the window and guys start to go up and then the, and I'm standing off to the side and I actually jumped in and said whoa 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 stop the evolution all right what's wrong here problem is that they have the ladder tip in the window so if they if they continue on and let that skill be performed with the ladder tip in the window we're basically legitimizing um, a bad tactic all right so what I like to do is I'll stop them right there I'll say listen this is this is where the tip has to be all right right at the windowsill because you don't want to get caught either going into the window or coming out of the window on that ladder tip so then I'll make them take it down all right we're gonna start over again we're gonna do it correctly this time so they're gonna they'll do it correctly and then I'll let them finish so that is just an example of immediate corrective action and of course when we talk about job performance um, we're always going to talk about discipline so as a fire officer unfortunately now you're going to be the disciplinarian um, and again you could have been the, the firefighter who was on the other side of the discipline you were the one that was always getting discipline possibly of course you know of your behavior but now shoes on the other foot and you may be tasked with being a disciplinarian to your members now remember a lot of times you were the firefighter riding in the back of the truck with these guys and now you know come January 1st you're the new lieutenant uh, and you're not one of the men anymore you know you have to basically distance yourself um, from the men and when I say men men and women uh, so you have to distance yourself from the crew and and you have to be the boss now you're the boss all right so positive discipline it's basically the method to motivate individuals to meet or exceed expectations right so you have a lot of you have a lot of good people out there and they just need to get have encouragement and to be motivated to do their best and to excel all right so as the fire officer you can identify some weaknesses um, in, in people you, you know these people because you've been working with them for a long time right um, set up some goals or some objectives to help them improve their performance right so you know if you have a uh, a new person that is, is trying to break in as a, a pump operator you know, give them the opportunity to go out drive the apparatus do some pumping right um, it helps them meet those targets and those goals and again this it can be done by uh, or it can be accomplished by recognizing improved performance so if you have a a firefighter that has been struggling with something um, whether it be some type of tactic on the fire ground um, understanding you know, pump pumping problems whatever and they, they excel or they, they, they pick it up and they, they start to do better you know you can recognize their improved performance you know in front of everybody hey I'd like to thank uh, you know firefighter Smith um, he's been doing a great job a lot of hard work um, getting to where he is now uh, really making a lot of improvement right and then you can reward excellence there's always different ways to reward excellence you can have some type of uh, you know awards program in the firehouse uh, give out a little plaque a little tchotchke or whatever um, what I used to do uh, a lot of times especially when I was when I was chief uh, usually the first few years um, we go out on a drill or whatever alright fellas you know we did a had a good drill tonight everybody executed there wasn't any problems um, we're gonna well, before we get back to the firehouse we're gonna meet at the the ice cream shop down the street and uh, buy everybody ice cream all right you know, or uh, you know a lot of times the even today the the fire chief or whatever uh, after a drill there'll be pizza you know back at the station so again just a little little, little thank you for you know, the members coming out there and uh, putting time in and, and doing a good job so along with positive discipline there's corrective discipline now one of the first parts of corrective discipline is uh, coaching All right so if you see that a member is having a problem right you as the fire officer 
you as the mentor, what you really need to do is start with coaching that person, right? Um, if you have a, a firefighter that is, he's having issues with driving the apparatus, pumping the apparatus, you may have to pull them aside, give them a little coaching. Um, they have issues putting up ladders, again, it may be a coaching issue, all right? Um, so we start with, with coaching the firefighter. But then if the, the discipline or if the, the actions um, start to get beyond that of it, the person is just making legitimate errors or mistakes, um, now we get into the oral reprimand, warning, or admonishment. Um, and they call this informal, and it's not part of their record uh, if the performance improves. So what they mean is you could give a uh, an oral reprimand, warning, or admonishment, uh, but you want to write it down, right? Again, you want to document everything. Again, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. So what this is saying is, you know, if you're going to give a, a firefighter an, a oral reprimand, write it down and keep, keep it off to the side, all right? And if that firefighter improves his performance and this doesn't happen again, that written reprimand just goes away all right it doesn't become part of his his jacket all right and again this can be volunteer it's definitely career but it can be volunteer uh, as far as keeping you know records on on members record keeping is so important these days in the fire service um, if not to protect your members to protect the department to protect yourself of course you know litigation is rampant uh, anymore as far as uh, people suing the department, members suing the department, members suing each other, members suing officers. So, you know, it's just crazy. It's not like it was like when I came in, you know, 45 years ago. Well, you know, we had a good time, but now it's, you know, it's crazy. So here's an example. I mean, they use this example in the book, right? So your driver, operator, chauffeur, whatever you want to call them, <clears throat> you realize that, you know what? This guy isn't stopping for red lights whenever when he's responding. Uh, so you pull him aside and say, "Listen, department policy is, you know, you got to stop for red lights, right?" And my expectation as the officer is, you stop for red lights. Um, safety of, first of all, the safety of our crew is at stake, and the safety of the motoring public, right? And then, then there's litigation, all right? Some cameras are all over the place. Um, all someone has to do is is video you of responding through a red light without stopping. It looks like it's you know possibly caused an accident or the threat an accident was there. You know it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. So this has to be you know you need to follow the department regulations. And if the performance is improved, the the record the the uh, the reprimand will go away. Um, if it's not, if you don't improve, it becomes part of your record and we're going to take the discipline to the next level. <clears throat> so we also have corrective discipline, um, informal written reprimand, and many departments, including volunteer departments, are require fire officers to submit reprimands in writing on specific forms. So you as the new fire officer coming up, uh, you kind of need to get with um, your administration and just get an idea of what forms that you may have to fill out from time to time. Uh, different kind of reports, incident reports um, are a big thing if something happens, um, but you need to know what the policies are. And it's incumbent on you to know how your system operates. And my advice to you is <clears throat> always document so it doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. Um, and just file it somewhere where, you know, next year you can pull it out and say, oh, wait a minute, I documented this incident. Here it is. This is what this is what happened, right? And I like to use the vacation slip example. Now, one department that I used to work in, they used to have, um, if we had uh, full staffing, uh, we have, you know, a lot of volunteers that, you know, there was a, they were local, right? They, their, their firehouse wasn't too far away. They, they wanted to attend a meeting, all right? 
uh, whatever. So the uh, the chief on duty would say, all right, listen, fill out a vacation slip for the rest of the the rest of the tour. All right. Um, then that that firefighter would go to his meeting or training, whatever, you know, for a few hours that night. Um, and if he returned and there was no problem, you know, he didn't get into an accident, uh, nothing happened, the chief would just rip up the vacation slip. But the chief was covering himself, so if something happened to this guy, it was like, well, why is this guy off, you know, off duty when he's supposed to be working uh, and he, he got into a car accident or whatever? Um, you know, explain yourself. Oh, well, he was on, you know, he put in for vacation. Here's his vacation slip. Again, if nothing happened, vacation slip was ripped up, thrown away. So just, just an example of, you know, officers working with their membership and trying to make, you know, life easier and try to accommodate uh, the members. And again, it works both ways. If, you know, you got an officer that's going to go that far out of the way for you, you need to treat that officer right too. So that's my uh, t one plan. So keeping with fire department administration, um, there's a lot of reports. So obviously as a, a career officer, you got all kind of reports you got to fill out. But as a volunteer fire officer, again, you really need to document a lot. So one of the first and one of the most important reports, I think, is training reports. You need to document the members' training. You need to document the fire company's training. Again, this is going to go a long way in litigation um, where it's going to come back. And as a fire officer, that you may be tasked with maintaining training reports. And don't take this lightly because if there's a firefighter injury or death, one of the first things they're going to ask is, uh, let me see the training records. So if you don't have good training records, you know, uh, you could be uh, in for you know a lot of a lot of problems. It's it's only going to it's only going to help you. It's going to help your firefighter. It's going to help your department in the long run if you can document the training. And then going along with training, if there's a an OSHA incident, OSHA comes in, they're going to want to see the training records. And uh, there's there's a lot to be said for maintaining and training records. Uh, the other thing is um, report writing as far as documenting runs. Now this is uh, ENFERS, an ENFERS report, National Incident, National Fire Incident Reporting System. Um, this is a uh, nation, national system that records fire department responses that gets put into a national database just like you know police reports police crime reports get put into a database <clears throat> all these uh, national uh, the all these fire reports get put into the uh, national database that can be um, so they come out with record keeping and they come out with um, reports on, on fire statistics uh, through the uh, the federal government and all that now real quick to the to the left I just copied this is just a, a printed version of a Enfers report on our system. It's not complete, so you know if you look at some of the numbers, they're not complete. I just pulled it off it real quick. Um, but we do Enfers reporting using a, uh, a computerized program. Much much easier from the, the early days of the uh, Enfers reports, where you had to fill it out by hand on you know a piece of paper, and it was uh, you know the guys just didn't want to do it. Now it's like <clears throat> you can do a with with the computerized programs that that are linked to your CAD systems, you know you can uh, do an Enfers report in a couple of minutes. And again, a lot of departments, especially career departments, uh, the fire officer is responsible to fill out the report when he gets back in quarters from that run. Um, and also, the the nice thing about this is there's space for narratives. All right, you can you can type in a narrative. Everybody, every company that responded on the call can that officer can type in a narrative of what they did. So you have a very complete um, record keeping of the incident, which you can go back and you can, you know, download as a report as requested. 
So answers reporting, uh, very important. And it also goes a long way in documenting how busy your department is. So, you know, if you're looking for a, uh, you know, it comes time where we want to replace an apparatus. Well, all right, well, how many, how many runs did that apparatus go on? Well, we, if we have that documented in Enfers, we can say, listen, this, this apparatus ran a lot in its past 15, 20 years. It really needs to get, you know, replaced. Um, or if there's other issues like, well, you guys aren't very busy, you know, how, why do you need more manpower or there's going to be cuts? Well, you know, we can produce a report that shows, yeah, well, last year we went to, you know, 300 working fires, all right? So it's very important. And the, the problem was, uh, at least with the first, the the first generation Enfers reports, it was so time consuming, especially doing it by hand, that uh, guys weren't recording fires. It was like they would just put down, uh, you know, false alarm or whatever, something simple. Because once you get into the uh, an actual fire report, there's a few more um, steps that you have to take to fill out. But again, now it's it's so simple, you know. You can have a, a, a well-involved fire, and it doesn't take that much longer to fill out the needed paperwork to get that documented. So, Enfers reporting very important. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that kind of wraps up Chapter Five, Administration. So, like I say, thanks for watching. Um, I'm not going to tell you to be safe. I'm going to tell you to be smart, uh, stay disciplined, and that includes tactical discipline. All right, keep training. And what I like to tell everybody that seems to piss a lot of people off is nothing we do is safe. All right, so till next time, uh, be safe out there, be smart, stay disciplined, keep training. And again, nothing we do is safe.